Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and let's talk strategy, part of the 2022 Saudi Arabia Grand Prix. So again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. We're going to have a lot more strategic videos coming on up throughout the 2022 season. And of course, a lot of various racing game gameplay. So of course, please make sure you're subscribed. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, do everything that you guys normally do. So this race occurred on Sunday, March 27th, 2022. And it was the second race of the 2022 season. Uh, it was ultimately won by Max Verstappen. And all in all, it was a very interesting race. Maybe not necessarily strategically speaking, it's, uh, it's all right. But as far as the race itself goes, a lot of great battles. But the very other interesting thing was, of course, this track was going to yield many did not finish results but a lot of them weren't necessarily due to cars crashing out. It's more or less a lot of them due to various failures. So for the pre-race, you know, what happened prior to the race? In Bahrain, the tire choices were chosen to be C1 through C3, you know, C1 being the hardest tire compound and C3 being the softest. Now, I believe that was chosen due to Bahrain's rougher track surface, but in Saudi Arabia, it was chosen that the tire compounds would be, you know, C2s to C4s. You know, the track surface was a little bit smoother and a little bit newer than Bahrain's, so they're able to utilize some softer compounds but it was interesting that, you know, qualifying utilized a lot of softs in general, but the race itself was very unique in the matter of that uh, only the hard tires and the medium tires were used, and we'll get, in, get to that in a moment. But as far as Pirelli's uh, pit windows were, what their estimated pit windows were, they're thinking that if you start on mediums and you you know, finished on hards after doing a pit between lap 15 and 20, that was going to be the fastest strategy. So then their next, uh, next strategy that was almost as quick, they were thinking that around you know, 31 to 37 after changing to hards, you change back to mediums. Um, and again, that was very, very close to how quick the one-stop strategy was going to be. And then finally, for something a little bit more outrageous, something that you needed to definitely plan ahead was doing the soft tires uh, when you start on them and then around either lap 9 to 13 somewhere there changing to hearts and then from 32 to 38 changing back to mediums um, so in that kind of mindset is uh, Pirelli definitely thinking that you would in the middle of the race change to hearts the majority of the race being on hearts and then depending on what happened in the race, maybe change it back to mediums. And for the most part, that is very similar to what actually happened. Uh, at least the first two strategies where it was the one stop and then the two stop with the medium at the end. Um, absolutely nobody did the two stop that involved, you know, starting on softs, you know, making up positions and then going to hards and then flipping back to mediums at the end. Um, and it was very interesting to see that the ones who did do the one-stop strategy were definitely the ones that had reaped the most rewards because pretty much everybody in the top eight did a one-stop strategy. And at that point, the only people who also did a one-stop strategy that didn't really benefit from it were individuals that either had penalties like one and show and then stroll who did a you know one stop and then at the very you know towards the end um albon had plowed into him and had massive pace degradation at the end so uh, stroll being the last to finish um, on the one stop wasn't anything to do with strategy it was just kind of due to bad luck per se and again kind of like I was saying to uh, all the other individuals who had um, DNF'd or did not finish we're also trying to do a one stop strategy apart from Bottas Bottas had actually gone into the pits changed out tires and something happened to the car where they're just like all right I guess that's it we're done so yeah, very, very interesting uh, strategy overall, where the one-stopper was definitely the the way to go. So during the time frame of the race, which was rather interesting, 
Um, there is only one safety car and actually then two uh, virtual safety cars. So virtual safety car on lap 16 changed to an actual safety car onto lap 16 and then a virtual safety car on lap 38. So at the very end with the incident with Albon, it didn't actually produce any safety cars or any uh, virtual safety cars. It just more or less produced a yellow flag, which we'll talk about that incident in a little bit. So looking at this graph here, you're kind of asking the question, all right, so who was the biggest winners out of these strategies and who are the biggest losers? Now, starting off the bat, uh, the biggest losers were obviously the ones who didn't start nor the ones who actually weren't able to finish. So Schumacher, Sonoda, Latifi, Alonso, Ricardo, Bottas, and Alban, all of which, um, you know, had car issues or crashed out or something like that. So obviously those strategically speaking were the biggest failures. The next one was uh, kind of like I was uh, stating earlier was in Guan Zhou. So strategically speaking, he did everything correctly. He was doing a one-stop strategy as well. But the issue that he had was just the, the penalties that came at him very early on that uh, just kind of plagued his race. You know, nobody else really had any penalties to serve. So he was getting these harsh penalties and just wasn't able to really go anywhere. So the next biggest loser is uh, Stroll. So again, one-stop strategy worked out great, but towards the very end has an incident with Alex Albon uh, where Albon actually crashes out, was not able to finish the race, and Stroll just kind of crawled his way to the end it, it's just the extent of the car damage seemed pretty severe uh, but was able to bring it over the line you know a, a lap down from everybody else yes um, but you know again that wasn't strategically anything bad or no weird plays that were happening it was just due to bad luck so last of the biggest failures as far as uh those who did the one-stop strategy was actually perez so perez had pitted on um lap 15 and then uh, the safety car or the virtual safety car period happened so when he pit on lap 15 he went down into fourth place while then leclerc verstappen and signs in that order had moved up a place and then the safety car or virtual safety car period happened where then you know perez going around the main straight or going around the last corner into the main straight had then to reduce his speed by 40 percent so only 60 percent of what the normal speed going down that straight is and when it comes to strategy, you need every second you can. Because ultimately, if this was a normal safety car period, call it like the accident happened uh, partway through the, the track and the safety car had pulled out and everybody was behind and then everybody did their pits and uh, press had stayed out, you know, press would have been great. Um, but the problem was is that everybody had um, then pit. Press is coming around the main straight at 40% lesser speed than usual. So then everybody just kind of came out in front of him, apart from uh, Science we were pressing. Science had a little bit of a, a, a scuffle or something right at, right at the pit exit. But unfortunately, Perez really wasn't able to utilize the undercut. And this is a situation where the undercuts don't necessarily always work. So now on the other side of the equation, let's take a look at the individuals that had started on hards and then partway through the race changed to mediums versus the successful one-stopper where it was the mediums and then the hards. So the individuals that were doing the uh, one-stop in reverse was Hulkenberg, uh, Hamilton, and Magnussen. So Hulkenberg had an issue where after the first safety car, versus the uh, virtual safety cars. Uh, Hulkenberg had, you know, stayed, you know, started on the hards, went up, went up, just fine. Everybody pit. So he actually did pretty well. He was up into ninth. But as everybody came out of the pits, they were all on fresher hard tires. And just as the safety car had gone back in, the racing had started, he had some massive performance degradation, or, or at least tire degradation. I was watching the onboards there, and he was slipping all over the place. I'm surprised he was able to keep the car out for as long as he was um, before pitting eventually. Before you pit, somewhere around looks like about uh, lap 37 or thereabouts. So if we look here, um, kind of has horrible tires, horrible tires, horrible tires. 
you have all sorts of DNFs and a couple of people who pet, you know, being Magnuson and Hamilton. So he kind of goes up a little bit to 11th and then he himself has to pet, comes back down and now it's just in last for the good portion of the race until he's able to pass uh, his teammate Lance Stroll due to the fact that Lance had uh, an incident with Albon. So obviously here, that was not the way to go because the, the amount of time that you're on the hard tires you lost some huge, huge performance here where everybody naturally lost performance on their hard tires if they were doing the one stop and they kind of went down, which is fine, but apparently it was obvious that the performance lost in this area was far greater than in this area. So then let's take a look at the final two one stoppers in reverse here. So we've, bought, we've got both Hamilton and Magnuson. So Hamilton... In my opinion, I feel like he had lost out a ton here. So Hamilton was going to pit right at the start of the second virtual safety car period due to Alonso having issues. Uh, his engineer said, okay, Alonso's got issues. We've got a virtual safety car now. We should start looking at doing pits. So after they had that conversation, came back, back around, passed you know, Alonso again, and said, all right, box, box, box. What happened is, is Hamilton then had seen Ricardo kind of stopped at the pit entryway and was uh, kind of got distracted by it. And he was like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on? And as he's having the stop process, he just whips past it. And, you know, uh, engineers like box, 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 box. And Hamilton goes, ah, crap, it's too late now. And that right there became a huge something that should have been like minutely consequential became this giant issue because at that point due to you know the cars kind of stopped at the pit entryway uh the pit entry was then closed off so everybody could roll their cars in which kept hamilton out for another four laps you know on increasingly worse and worse and worse tires of course behind a virtual safety car not a big deal but the consequences of those were huge because then Magnussen, who had nearly an identical situation to Hamilton, had actually less space between Ricardo and like the pit entry line, was actually able to dive in after Hamilton went by. So Hamilton goes by, goes, oh shoot, should have pit. Magnussen sees it and goes, pit lane's still open. Nobody closed it yet. Dives on in extremely risky move but by doing so was able to swap out his tires to mediums had much fresher tires for a lot longer than hamilton and eventually hamilton had to claw back those place decreases that had happened due to the fact that he now had to pit after the safety car or virtual safety car period ended and now had to pit under green flag due to the fact that he had to wait for everybody to move their cars all the way, make sure all the marshals were off the track, um, and then, you know, the FIA eventually getting around to, you know, opening up the pit lane. So overall, it cost Hamilton one place and nine seconds to Magnuson at the end. Um, again, hugely consequential when you're when you think that it's only going to be like, oh, you just have to take an extra lap and then you can go into the pit line. So the fact that he lost so much and had to claw his way back from, you know, 12th up into 10th to be able to, to deal with that. Um, yeah, in, insane, insane what happened. So now that I've named more than half the grid having a horrible race, whether it be strategically speaking or just their cars crapping out or crashing out or something. Let's talk about the biggest winners of this race. Who had the best strategies? Who had the best luck in this race? So this one goes without saying that Max Verstappen had an insanely lucky race because what happened is he saw Perez pitting earlier, was able to capitalize on getting up, moving up a place into second, and then was able to pit at the same time as Leclerc and Sainz and was able to pull out all of them in front of uh, Perez. And then after a couple of laps of, you know, kind of doing cat and mouse with um, uh, Leclerc at the end, then was able to make a place increase 
And then with the yellow flags due to the issue with Albon and Stroll, nobody was able to pass. The race ended under a yellow flag and thus handed the win to Verstappen. So as much as I am slightly in Mercedes and McLaren and Ferrari fan right now, as as much as I hate to say it, like, you know, Verstappen, like, great job. That that was honestly insanely lucky. So, yeah, like I was saying, you know, biggest wins being primarily the ones who had the one-stop strategy. So Red Bull, loosely, uh, Ferrari, you know, Russell from Mercedes, Akon from Alpine, Lando Norris from McLaren, and Pierre Gasly. One-stop strategy, way to go. Great job. But the one that I found the most in interesting one was actually Lando Norris because his line was kind of all over the place for a one-stop strategy. But it kind of worked. So at the beginning, he had a little bit of a fight with uh, Pierre Gasly. Did not win that fight with Pierre, but was very patient because by the time that he had gone uh, into the uh, safety car period, he was able to make that pit. Only last like two places here, which is actually pretty good for you know first time safety car when you've got all these these massive place decreases like Akon and and you know uh, Hamilton and Magnussen and whatnot. So Lando in the middle of the race here, everybody was just kind of doing their laps, spinning the laps, and pretty uneventful for the most part. Um, and then Hülkenberg has this issue with his tires fading. You know, Lando was able to make the pay, the place increase, and then all hell broke loose. So Alonso, uh, Alonso having the car issue, uh, Ricardo having the car issue, Bottas having a car issue. Um, Norris was just naturally promoted up into ninth to made, making those three place increases. And then made a couple more place increases as Kevin Magnussen and Hamilton had to pit for their reverse one-stop strategy. Then had a final fight with Akon. Almost made it up into sixth. Almost. But overall, starting from 11th and going up to 7th, I mean, that right there is just is good strategy and good racing. It's, it's a little bit of both because, you know, he chose the right strategy starting on mediums and doing a singular one stop to hards versus trying to change out to softs or mediums later. Um, and yeah, it just, you could tell that he was just on, on the ball that day. The car worked great. Uh, Lando was able to keep it out of the wall, was able to make those place increases where other people were having some struggles. Um, yeah. So even though a little bit disappointed about not taking Akon at the end, you know, still a great race from Lando Norris. So that was my review of the Saudi Arabian 2022 Grand Prix. Uh, of course, if you liked uh, this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I want to say next week I might do a Formula One uh, strategy definitions, talking about what an overcut is, what an undercut is, um, maybe talking about what a delta is and why you want to keep it positive or negative. So stay tuned for a lot of that. And of course, you know, standard gameplay is being released on Friday. So again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.